What is going on, Lunatic Fringe? Guys, I didn't prepare for this. I just want I want to read this while we do it because we got something important. There is an update and it's on tax to gas. So you're going to know as I know. And we've got a new post from Commonwealth talking about the unofficial website. Now, I'm in a private chat with the unofficial website and I made my opinion known. Not that it really matters a whole lot. Um, but, you know, there's some struggles that you have because not everybody in the validators are even supportive of having a website, which is very odd to me. But they have their reasons. Now, um, and I've expressed those reasons, of course. So we're going to talk about those. And we got a little bit more to go over, too, uh, including price action and uh, some other cool stuff. So um, sit tight and let's get into it. All right, guys, so we start off with bi-weekly report from Genuine Labs. Genuine Labs has agreed to give updates. So uh, it's been two weeks. Genuine Labs has decided to bring an update on our mission to fuel the Terra Classic growth. So the highlights of the past two weeks are the implement tax to gas module, change the way Wasm handle, uh, handler plugin behave and upgrade the handle. You can find the works right here. Now, the tax to gas module will now hold gas prices valued of 22 denoms of Terra Classic. Uh, the volume, uh, the module will define the logic of the anti-handler and post-handler. The tax will now be converted to gas and consumed at post-handler after run messages is called. In simpler terms, the fees will not be fully consumed, but the need part will be consumed and the fee will only be consumed on transaction success. So uh, these are the, the technical readout, if you will, of what will happen. The anti-handler will only deduct tax that's based on consumed gas counted to that point. For example, the total gas needed for the transaction is 200,000. But as there is a small part of gas consumed counted to the point of anti-handler, say 50,000 gas, we will now convert 50,000 gas to taxes based on gas price defined earlier and try to remove them from the fee users provide. Uh, do we continue to convert taxes comes around the amount sent to gas. For example, sending 100,000 Luna will make the taxes 100 uh, U Luna. You, uh, we will now convert 100 U Luna to gas and do a check that the gas of transaction is sufficient. The post handler will calculate consumed gas at that point, which is kind of majority of the transaction and convert consumed gas back to taxes until this point. We try to deduct the taxes from the fees the users provide. So basically they're putting a little middleman, if you will, in between what was currently happening with the, the, the burn tax, et cetera, et cetera. So in between that, the gas will be pulled out, converted, uh, or the, the fee, if you will, will be con uh, pulled out, converted, turned into uh, the, the tax to gas, it will it will turn into the gas, then it will, whatever portion, burn, whatever's taken out, and then it'll be converted back over so that the normal transaction can resume. Upgrade handler for V81, which includes the adding of new stores of tax to gas. Now, the next steps that they're talking about is putting in a lot of effort in the upcoming weeks to overcome challenges and deliver new features smoothly, specifically unit tests for the new module and implementation, end-to-end -end tests, and then manual tests, and then a test net test. So um, this is... Uh, it's pretty exciting. So uh, it changes fundamentally the way that we burn. It changes fundamentally the way that uh, the the taxes work, or you know, if there's a change to taxes or anything like that, that's going to change fundamentally the way that it works. So um, very cool stuff happening over here, and it should be awesome. It should it should be awesome? But uh, we got about three more weeks before we really see the the full breadth of what it is so it should be done by the end of july also uh independent terra classic community website this was uh this was put up a little while back and, and this is uh now where it's not up for governance by the way not yet but it says this proposal aims to create an independent and dedicated terra classic website inspired by the bitcoin.org model now the goal is ultimately build a website that will be community driven uh, educational resources that support the decentralized nature of Terra Classic without assuming any legal liabilities. Uh, we'll be able to compete with top blockchain website in terms of functionality and form. It's very important, by the way. Look, I, there's a lot of people out here that are talking about well, we don't need a website. Um, have you seen the price action? Uh, I, I think people are not really worried about that price action, but uh, if you want to hold on to investors, you're going to need to have a place where people can safely go terralunaclassic.io, terralunaclassic.com, whatever it is, and find some information about where we where we were, what happened, how do we get to where we want to be, you know, roadmap stuff. Remember, there used to be uh, with the um, the L1TF, there was a, 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 a website that had 
all kinds of different road road map exactly what was supposed to happen now none of that transpired and the 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 or at least not all of that transpired things fell apart uh, for that team of builders so it's important to recognize that but in this context here we go since the crash in may of 2022 terra classic does not have a website that can be a comprehensive information place encourage developers and dapps uh to build on terra classic or be linked to by third parties like coin market cap coin gecko binance and others so you know we look like kind of a a, a very odd bird if you will uh as a matter of fact of the top 100 200 sorry of the top 200 cryptos on coin market cap this is the only one without a website let me let that sink in uh data estimated lost in traffic visits for terra classic since may 2022 um an estimated between 400,000 and 3.2 million visits based on the comparison of relative popularity trading volume and monthly visits of popular blockchains uh and then and then david is putting out a listing potentially of what we're talking about right here so uh this is since May 2022, but Bitcoin had almost 2 million visits. Uh, Solana, almost 2 million. Cosmos had 108,000. Terra Money had 163,000. So there are a lot of people visiting websites, and it seems very weird that it's not being supported. We should be able to agree that that seems odd. So there's the purpose. There's the scope. This is, um, and by the way, here we go. This is a no for me. Firstly, I thought this project chose to pivot to a donation funding plan. I would also question how the original quote of 25895 has been reduced to 23240 by removing the nice to have features. Does that mean they aren't worth all that much or how is the financing of this now being calculated? A change in the approach of the final website front and back end development after publishing the MVP website and completing the design work on the final website. Uh, I, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this I cannot agree with. This is suggesting your team wants payment for the work, which is a valid point if passed. However, it suggests that any community-based input is unpaid, which leads me to feel that your team is happy to take a slight pay cut to offload what I would view as the bulk of the work in programming. Finally, who sources and pays for hosting for this service? This may have been discussed before, but since the scope has changed and implementation is now handed in the community, does that mean someone else arranges hosting? Now, this is a fair question to be asking, and it should be answered before it goes up for governance, or at least readily should be handled before it goes up for governance. So there will be some discussion to be had here. Um, and of course, right here it says reduce cost by removing the unnecessary change in the approach to the final website, et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and look, I, you know, it occurs to me that it probably should be open source in, in, in some fashion where there, I, I, I don't know that, um, that, I don't know how, I, look, I, I know that a website benefits. Guys, I'm going to give you information that the veterans know, and that is staking. That's where you make a lot of cryptocurrency and cryptonomy Dot Finance allows you to stake a lot of cryptocurrency and earn a spectacular yield off of it. And I'm going to show you what I mean right now. You guys know I've been a big fan of Ondo. All right, guys, so my APY on Ondo right now is I have 11,500 Ondo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the maximum amount in here. Uh, I'm going for six months. Again, like I think that the market is going to have a big rip that I want to get this back out. Actually, I'm going to go with nine months because that gives me up until March of next year. And guys, if you follow me, you know I like March of next year as a big moment in crypto. So I'm going to stake this 71.8% yield on the interest rate for this. I'm going to continue. I'm going to put this in here. All right, guys, I am now holding and I am now staking uh, 11, I'm sorry, 11,500 Ondo that will be available to me on April 6th of 2025. And by that time, there will be 71% more Ondo. Now, will the price go up? I don't know. I, I don't know if the price is going to go up. However, uh, I will have more Ondo in case the price goes down or whatever happens. That's what the benefits of staking are. Guys, it is imperative upon you. Make sure that you're staking your crypto. Use cryptonomy.finance to stake your crypto, or you may end up regretting it. This is not financial advice, but I'm always right. Check out cryptonomy.finance today. But I don't know who controls the website, so if people are genuinely concerned, then I understand. But at the same time, something's got to give. And again, there's traffic coming. People want to know what's going on. People want a robust website that makes something look lively. And again, 100, 200 top uh, altcoins, including Bitcoin, 199 of them have a website. One of them does not. So um, that's the outlier. And by the way, we were a top 50 crypto even after 
the 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 downside movement even after the collapse at one point we were a top 50 now i think it's about 150 160 something like that you know down in the lower parts of the 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 100s and, and by the way it, it's not coincidence that these things these outlier incidents right here contribute to downward momentum so it would seem to me um, again, I don't know that this is the, the, the method that we want to do it by. That's for you to decide through governance. And my opinion doesn't really matter in that context, I guess. But I think everybody should at least consider that we need a website. I mean, you know, how we get there, that's on that's on governance. So, uh, and David is putting us together uh, to try to make something happen. And look, you can not like paying for it or something like that. But hey, you were a top 50 now you're 150. You're not going in the right direction. Uh, this was uh, 754 million market cap when we started covering this a long time ago. 370 million as of today. It's not going in the right direction. So you guys making the decisions to not do anything, that's on you. That's not on your typical investors sitting out here. I mean, um, we call spades spades, right? So let's move on and I'll let's check price action because guess what? Price action. Uh, is breaking down below the support line. So now we're going to have to start considering, and I have not yet, I want to be fair with you here, I have not yet considered what uh, what is happening here because, uh, by the way, I'm still kind of convinced that we're going to break back into this range and everything's going to start again. But if it does not, then we should at least... Uh, take a moment and consider, do we see any new patterns emerging? Uh, the, the best I can give you is, um, let's come down here. There's, you know, we're starting to mint lower, uh, lower lows. Then that's not a good sign. That's, that's an evacuation of investors. Now, um, you can make an argument that this is a downward sort of channel here, but the channel is not fully formed. At best, at this point, you're looking at something along these lines or maybe something along this line you can call again you can call it a descending channel uh, or a descending pen i mean you can you can come up with different ways to kind of look at it and and figure out what you think is going on but you know um this is not uh the the investors are being flushed out right now and new investors are not stepping in that's basically what we're seeing right now uh, why are they not stepping in i mean i don't know maybe website uh maybe not but you know, we should at least consider that there's a new pattern being formed here and that it's coming down and that it doesn't look good. Now, uh, again, I think if there is a spike, we'll be looking at this pattern that I've already laid out here for you as the top of that move. It's just a question now of when that happens and through what mechanism that starts to happen. So uh, I'll be watching this. I'll be watching it closely and uh, we'll see what happens. So but let's move on here and let's keep talking about price action because it's important. Uh, 387 million market cap, by the way. 754 when we started this. Uh, 754 million when I first started my first videos. 387 right now. Uh, volume, 15 million. Again, interest starting to wane here. Circulating supply was 5.4. It's different than it was yesterday. So Genuine Labs looks like they're doing some, some or all notes doing some updates here. Uh, 160 million volume in uh, Terra US in the USTC. And guess what? Uh, price go down 2%. So, um, you know, a lot of pressure, uh, a lot of downward momentum. If I look at a seven day chart, uh, it's up over the seven days. I look at the monthly chart continuing to dwindle. So uh, the direction of this is very clear and it's not in the positive and it's not positive for us. Now over on Coin Hall, you can look around here and you can see uh, Rakeoff down a little bit, Lunk down a little bit, uh, and Hamster Meme down a little bit on the day, or actually, actually that's the pairing, but it's still down in the Lunk pairing too. Terra and USTC down just a little bit in the day. Uh, Tooting Common up 9% on the day. That's not bad, but the rest of it generally just not a, a lot going on here. Now, uh, if you haven't already, uh, it's at Genuine underscore underscore labs if you want to follow uh, these guys and find out what's going on and stay informed. Also, of note here, Diamond Hands is pleased to announce that Lunk Live will officially be assisting Genuine Labs in their communication proceedings. And that's a very, very cool thing because if you look at this, it's June 21. So um, Mr. Diamond Hands has a, a commanding presence in this space and um, we need information coming out. So having him on board definitely ends 
very, very well. Now, as far as burns go, $585 million over the last seven days. It's actually a decent amount, not huge, but it, it's decent. Uh, that would be a couple billion over the course of a month. Remember, the first burns at the beginning of the month are already gone, so this is actually pretty nice. Uh, that, that we see over any kind of period of time. And if you look over here, you know, you can see it's steadily rising, steadily rising. So uh, nice to see uh, the, the burn at the beginning of this month. Again, not that gigantic, but, you know, um, you, know you, you can't have those wild, explosive 6.5 billions all the time. So uh, and, and so we're still stair-stepping our way up and still burning a little bit more of the supply. But getting back to what I told you guys yesterday, it's got the total supply. We're going to talk about the total supply. And I'm having discussions with people right now. We are talking about the total supply. How do we reduce that? Not just go into this wallet. And I was—I think I'm a little bit off when I was telling you how this, this works right now. The actual market cap is $388 million right now uh, based on this circulating supply. The projected diluted market cap, if all the tokens were in circulation, is $483 million. doesn't mean... That if these were put, if these were put into circulation, by the way, if we added 1.3 trillion, then the fully diluted market cap would not be 483 million. It'd still be the same market cap. Nothing has effectively changed. It would just further dilute the supply. So it is my belief that we need to burn this supply to get it to match the circulating supply, so that we're just dealing with the market cap being the same, whether it be fully diluted or a normal market cap, and then um, burning off of the chain each time, which creates more value for each and every one of your tokens. Um, so. Uh, we'll see whether or not that happens. Now, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you go check out Terra Casino for all of your uh, gaming-based risk asset needs. Luna Classic, Luna, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, BUSD, Polygonmatic, USDC, USDT, Dogecoin. You can, you can gamble each and every one of those. You can do sports wagering, PvP poker, uh, slot machines, whatever it is you are looking to do. It's available for you. Uh, all you have to do is go over there, including crypto trading. Additionally, if you're looking for meme coins, make sure that you go check out Terraport.finance. Terraport.finance is the place to be. Uh, in fact, let's go to the launch pad over here because we're looking at Rocket. What are we doing with our Rocket tokens? We're going to claim those Rocket tokens for today. Uh, I haven't uh, I made a trade yet. I'm going to do the swap a little bit later, but we now have 650 uh, of the 1,500. Uh, so we're, um, and we're holding about 5,000, I want to say 5,000. Um, Terra tokens. So uh, there we have it. This is, uh, uh, I think we're in, we're in, we're in good shape. I, I think we're in good shape overall. Uh, so let's look at Galactic Shift. Now, I've been talking to you guys about this game for a while. I'm in the white paper right now. Galactic Shift is a TCG trading card game. And I want you guys to at least give it a, a passing glance here, galacticshift.io. Um, here's the white paper. I've, I've been kind of perusing the white paper. Wanted to see like how it's played, what the rarity is stuff like that so uh the first thing is card rarity if you get the galactic shift starter pack uh then you have this but you have no opportunity for a legendary which doesn't mean that you're going to get a legendary if you get the booster pack but you have a better shot so uh if you go to the booster pack over here then you'll see that you have a 0.6 percent chance of legendary here's the good part though point uh, you, get, you go from two percent to five percent in epics uh, and then from 9.3 percent to 10 percent in rares and then you have a, a lesser chance of getting common or uncommon you're still going to get them mostly but that gives you a better opportunity so rarity distribution is what that's called so there you have it uh buy some booster packs once this thing launches now uh the stats that you're going to be talking about on galactic shift and we've watched the video before so we're just talking about the numbers here we're talking about the white paper and you've got attack defense um health points speed energy cost and then of course there's rarity and and that's based on the cards scarcity now uh types of uh, stuff that you have on, on cards are going to be characters, items, powers, and traps. So the characters uh, can provide players with a diverse range of options for building decks and developing strategies. Factions uh, offer even more exciting gameplay possibilities. The item cards represent weapons, armor, and other objects that can be equipped. Uh, powers are special abilities that players can utilize during battles. And traps are introduced uh, as an element of surprise and unpredictability. You can deploy a trap to ambush an opponent disrupt an enemy strategy and create opportunities to change the course of battle now the heroes uh there is a, a an ability section and of course legendary characters will, will have uh, additional or bonus stats right uh so the bonuses there are two potential permanent bonuses a bonus on speed gives an advantage to the calculation of who strikes first and then a bonus on health is how much 
damage that you can absorb. So um, uh, there's deck creation, explains to you how you do it. Um, uh, card rarity is a maximum of three copies of any common card is permitted, two copies of an uncommon card, and only one copy of any rare, epic, or legendary is permissible in the player deck, and it's going to be exactly 40 cards. So uh, you'll have to figure out what's best for you, and there'll, and there'll be some strategy guides as this comes out to give you an, an idea and there's a faction limitation energy curve while constructing a deck players should consider the energy cost of their cards a well-balanced energy curve ensures the availability of playable cards at all stages of the match from early to late game and remember it's very difficult sometimes when you're waiting for um your 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 energy bar to replenish it becomes very complicated very difficult so uh there is an energy system and here right now is the statistical kind of model here to give you an idea of how much uh, what, what your base cost is, um, and, and then you have a modifier. So, for example, your base cost of, a, of an attack is going to be three. Uh, it's going to be four if it's uncommon. It's going to be five if it's rare. It's going to be six if it's epic. It's going to be seven if it's unique. At least that's what I look at it as right there. Uh, so, uh, make sure you go check out Galactic Shift. This, to me, seems like a fascinating game. Uh, certainly a lot of fun. Now, again, I'm not a TCG guy, but I want to be for this purpose over here because uh, I want to check this game out and see and see what it is. So if you haven't already, galacticshift.io, go check it out. You can read through the white paper, get yourself familiarized. There's 1.3 million people in the Luna Classic community. So, and I rely on you guys, by the way, to share this content with everybody so that they can all see what is available. And we'll talk more about this Galactic Shift game uh, in a future episode because uh, I do have some videos and stuff like that. And, you know, they're, they're working hard in the background. So uh, it deserves to be covered quite a bit. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not qualified to give you financial advice. Uh, I am a, a passionate fan of the Luna Classic community. I am excited by the opportunities that it would present to an investor coming in. I'm also a promoter. So remember that in, in my quote unquote promotional attempts, I'm uh, trying to point out the benefits of uh, this chain and the opportunities. And look, my number one opportunity is the world loves a comeback story. Uh, this thing broke down and everybody would love to see this thing rise again. There are wallets sitting out there with Luna in them from the old days. And those wallets uh, might spike in price at some point And people who are broken can be made a little bit wholer than they were before. So, you know, this is a bit of a passion project. So make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe button, and the bell to be notified. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.